Hello everyone, welcome back to All Things Asia. So come cook dinner with me tonight, y'all. We are having homemade Salisbury steak, um, mashed potatoes, and corn on the cob. So I'm going to show y'all how I make my Salisbury steak. For the mashed potatoes, I'm not doing homemade tonight because I don't have any potatoes. So I'm doing a box mashed potatoes, but I am doing corn on the cob. And I'm going to walk y'all through and show y'all how I do this bomb Salisbury steak. Some people call it hamburger steak, but we call it Salisbury steak over here. So let's go ahead and get this video started. So I'm using ground beef, yellow and sweet onion, flour, butter, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, low sodium dano seasoning, onion soup. I usually use the beefy onion soup, but I don't have any. That's all I had in my cabinet. Seasoning salt, olive oil, and war. No, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. The W sauce. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be using. I'm not going to season a lot with the seasoning salt. Uh, because you know, I don't want anything salty because it has sodium in it as well as the onion soup mix. Now, the Dano seasoning is low sodium, okay? So, I'm not going to season too heavy. And I did forget to mention you also need some gravy browning. I think this one is called Kitchen Bouquet. Um, you can use Mr. Gravy, I think that's what it's called, whatever you like. And I'm using Better Than Bouillon roasted chicken flavor, and you will also need some water, of course. So first, I'm going to go ahead and open my seasonings. I like to do this so, you know, it don't take up a whole lot of time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and season my meat before I add, uh, before I put my gloves on. I use onion powder, garlic powder. Use as much garlic powder and onion powder as you like, you know. If it's no salt, don't be scared to season, okay? So that's my Danos. I'm not going to use a lot of that. It's low sodium. Seasoning salt, I'm not going to use a lot of that either because it does have sodium in it. And I'm adding that uh, beefy onion soup, the W sauce. Not too much, y'all. I don't measure, so I can't give out measurements. I'm kind of like an eye, you know, type of person. Like I measure with my eyes. Black pepper. And then I'm going to add my onion soup i have a half pack that i had open previously so that's what i'm using and like i said before you can use the beefy onion soup because that's what i like to use the most and it's a half pack of that and i'm using one egg i usually use ritz crackers also like a small pack of the ritz crackers uh crackers punch it up really good and that's what i usually use but i don't have any and, you know, that's optional. You don't have to use that. Because some people like to use breadcrumbs. I haven't ever used breadcrumbs with it. um, Because I always have the Ritz crackers. So, I think I use breadcrumbs maybe once. But, yeah. I like the Ritz crackers better. And I also like to buy the Ritz crackers. You know, just to have them. I like to eat them as well as my kids. So, after we season up everything, we're going to go ahead and give this a good mix. I don't know about y'all, but y'all, I rinse off every single thing. Like, I wash all of my meats. But, you know, with the ground beef, I rinse ground beef off also. So, as I give this a good mix, I want to make sure everything is mixed up really, really well. Because, you see, that's not mixed well. So, I just go ahead, take my hands. Don't be afraid to get them messy. I got gloves on. Mix up everything real good. I started to do a voiceover because that's what I'm always doing. But I was like, you know what? I'm not doing a voiceover today. Let's just go ahead and record this video um, <laughs> without doing a voiceover. So I feel like right now everything is mixed up real good. So I'm going to go ahead and get that off of my hands. And then I'm going to... Take my gloves off. And the reason why I'm taking these gloves off, I'm going to put some more on because I didn't get my other cutting board or something to put the patties on. So I'm going to take these off right now. So now I'm just going to put some more gloves on. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab um, some beef, and I'm going to form it into patties. Not too big, not too small. Then 
that's how I do here. I'm just gonna place them down on my parchment paper. So now that all of them is formed into the patty, all the beef is formed into the patty, so I'm gonna go ahead, remove those gloves, send them to the side, and I'm gonna be cleaning up this. But next it's time to go to the stove. All right, so I just got done wiping my stove off. Now I'm gonna take some olive oil, not a lot, just put it in a pan. I do have my stove on medium getting hot. And it's only a little bit, so you know, it's not gonna take long to get hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my beef patties in there. I'm not going to put all of these um, in here because I'm going to put a few of them in the oven and make like little meatloaf patties. I feel like I can get one more in here if I just figure out how. <laughs> like right here. There we go. And then the other two is going to be in little meatloaf patties. So I'm going to let these cook. And I like to mash them down as they cook because y'all can see they get puffy. And I don't want them too, too big. So I let those cook a few minutes on both sides. I'm going to flip it over. In about three minutes, I'll flip it over. So it has been three minutes later, and I'm going to go ahead and flip them over. I'm gonna let them cook for about three minutes on this side. And grease is just splattering everywhere. So I'm gonna let them cook for about three minutes on this side also. So it has been three minutes, and I'm gonna flip them over one more time. Let them cook for about another minute or two. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove them from my pan. I'm just going to set them to the side. My pan is moving away from me, but <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and remove them. So I had to wipe my stove off again. So now is where we add our butter. I want to be adding just a piece of butter to this. Let that melt down. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my onions. And I'm going to just let these onions cook. Keep that same grease, y'all. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone saw that I kept the same grease. So I'm just going to keep the same grease. It's going to be so much flavor for your gravy, so because that's what we're doing now. We're making our gravy. So I'm gonna let these onions just cook for a few minutes, maybe for about five minutes. I'm not gonna let them burn, but just until they get softer. So once my onions start to look like this, I'm gonna go ahead and add my flour. This is less than a half cup. I'm not gonna use all of that. 
at one time. And we want to make sure we put that uh that flour in there real good. Like let that flour get good and toasted because we don't want to have clumps of flour in our gravy. So then I'm going to add a little bit more flour. Like I say, I'm not going to add all of it at one time. I'm using my whisk to do this part. So I went and I add. So I went and I add the rest of that flour. And we're gonna keep whisking it up. Make sure that flour is good and toasty because once again, we don't want clumps of flour in our gravy. Keep stirring it. You know, it's gonna get darker. But we don't want it to burn. So once it starts to look like this, you know, some people it'll look kind of dry. I never make my gravy that way. I'm not saying that it's the wrong way because I have to taste gravy where they made it look like it was, you know, dry and stuff like that. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. But if you watch other people's videos and compare it to mine, then you'll see what I'm talking about. So now I'm going to be adding... And my water, I have three cups of water, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some of my water. And it's hot water. I'm going to whisk it up, mix it up. I add little by little. So you can see the gravy got thick. Like, it's really thick. So I'm going to add in some more water. And I'm going to add in the rest of it. So that was a total of three cups of water. And as this starts to like cook, I have it on low. So like as it starts to summer, it's going to get thick again. And here's a piece of onion just stuck on here. Oh. Next, I'm going to take three teaspoons of this Better Than Bouillon. If you have the beef flavor, you can use that also. I love the chicken flavor. So I'm going to take three teaspoons of that and add it to my gravy. That's just for the extra flavor, y'all. It tastes so good. Now, some people just like to like just season their gravy and going on about their day. But me, I want all the flavor because I want it to taste really good. And it's not going to be salty. It's not going to be salty. So after I add that better than bouillon, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some pepper. A little bit of garlic powder. Not much. A little bit of onion powder. And I like my gravy a little darker, so that's where this gravy browning comes in at. I'm just going to add just a tiny, tiny tiny bit of that like literally like maybe a drop of it that's it now i'm going to see whether it's to my liking with the color it did get a little darker but i want it a little darker so there we go there was a bit much but it's not going to be that dark And this is how I like it right here. Get those onions back in there. And here it is simmering. And as it's summer, you can see that it starts to get thicker. Like you can literally see that it's getting thicker. We're going to go ahead and add our patties to the gravy. Now that we've added our patties back to the gravy, we're going to just let them simmer for a few minutes. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add my lid. And I'm going to put this on another eye, cut it on simmer for about mm, maybe 10 minutes. And I'm not going to let it burn, so I am going to stir it and shake it so that it doesn't stick or anything. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started on my corn and my mashed potatoes. All right, so for my corn, I just mix up some a stick of butter, um, some Creole seasoning, some smoked paprika, um, and some sugar. One fourth cup of sugar. If y'all want a recipe on that, you know, I can give it to y'all. So I'm just mixing that up. I'm doing oven roasted corn. I like sweet corn, so I'm just gonna get that butter, that mixture all over these corn. Really good. They're gonna be buttery season and sweet you can't go wrong with it all right so now i'm gonna just sprinkle just a little bit of parsley for a nice color we're gonna wrap these up really tight I'm gonna put just a tad bit of water in here in the bottom. And just add just a little bit of water to the bottom. Just a tad bit. And we're gonna put these in the oven 400 degrees for 25 minutes. So now with these instant mashed potatoes, I add a half stick of butter to some boiling water. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. I was gonna add garlic, but everybody in my house, you know, I like uh, garlic mashed potatoes. And I'm just gonna pour all of that, to be honest. And we're gonna whisk it up. Mashed potatoes tend to start um, popping, so let me turn this thing down. And it does hurt when it pop. It really do. So that's how my mashed potatoes is looking. See the butter still melting. Now I'm gonna add some heavy cream. And this is also a step that I take when I'm making homemade mashed potatoes. I love adding heavy cream. It makes it so creamy. I'm using a non-stick pot, so that's why I like my mashed potatoes. I'm moving all about. Nothing sticks to this pot, and I love it. Then I'm gonna go to add the remaining of that butter. So that butter smell, I'm gonna put the lid on this. I'm going to remove it from this eye. The corn has about five minutes left on it. And y'all can see my Sazberry steak back there. Oh, I can't wait to eat, y'all. So here's the finishing results on how everything looks. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope y'all tried my recipe. And I'm about to enjoy my food. So yeah. I will see y'all in the next video. And again, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And again, as always, thank you for my new and returning subscribers and viewers. Thank y'all so, 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 so much. Continue to support. And I'll be bringing more videos. See y'all next video.